Dear Mrs. Haven, This morning at 8.47 EST, I woke up to find myself excused from time. I can picture you perfectly reading this letter. You'll be telling yourself I've gone stupid with grief or that I've lost my mind. But my thinking has never been clearer. Believe me, Mrs. Haven, when I tell you that this is no joke. Time moves freely around me, gurgling like a whirlpool, fluxing like a quantum field, spinning like a galaxy around its focal hub. At the hub, however, everything is quiet. Is there a chance, no matter how infinitesimal, that you'll find and read this manuscript one day? If I didn't think so, I could never keep on. And if I don't keep on, I'll disappear completely. A physicist might term this place a singularity, a point in space-time where the laws of the cosmos have snapped. But it's like no singularity I've ever heard of. As you know very well, the only type of singularity permitted by physics is a point of infinite density and weight, ripping everything, even light itself, out of the continuum in which time exists. A black hole, in other words, which should have torn me limb from limb by now. But this place is no black hole, I'm sure of that. It's comfortable, first of all, an armchair, a card table, a half-empty bottle of Foster's Lager, a ream of stationery, and a refillable tortoise shell pen, the kind you see in duty-free airplane catalogs but would never dream of actually buying. It also happens to be a place I know well, the library of my deceased aunt's apartment on 109th Street and 5th Avenue on the fourth floor of a crumbling brownstone with the improbable name of the General Lee at the middle income end of Central Park. You never came here, Mrs. Haven, because my aunt stopped receiving visitors during the Nixon administration. But I want to make sure you can see this place clearly. Cramped though it is, it's my entire world. <laughs>